What's up guys, this is Merg Music, and welcome back to Nerd Place. Today we're going to be going over everything new that's coming for Modern Warfare 3 Season 2. And fair warning, I'm probably going to skip over Warzone because I really don't play Warzone. And I mean, if you want more information on that kind of stuff, I'm sure there's other people you could watch. I'm mostly going to be covering the multiplayer side of things and also zombies as well. And while I typically don't focus that much on the store stuff, there is some stuff that I want to kind of like tie into the main conversation for this season because... It's kind of a weird one. So yeah, we're going to go over all this information. I'll get you guys caught up and I'll share my thoughts on what season two is looking like so far. So here's season two so far. We got <laughs> we got ghost with like this funky uh, blue sh fart queef coming out of his mask. I don't know exactly what they're going for here. Like, I don't know if it's supposed to be like scary, like zombies themed or if he's again, he's just smelling like a blue fart. But yeah, that's like the main skin. That's going to be like the main battle pass skin. Moving on, let's talk about the actual content. So we're going to have four 6v6 maps coming in season two. Now, obviously not all of them will be at launch, but there's going to be three brand new maps and then a fan favorite remaster. They're also adding map variants for Skid Row and Terminals for specific playlists like Horde Point and Vortex. So it's really just LTMs. There is going to be a new war map, which I'm really looking forward to. It's going to be called Operation Tin Man. And apparently this skyscraper map, I think is taking place on the map Overwatch from the original Modern Warfare 3. So this actually has me really excited because you guys know I fucking love playing war in Modern Warfare 3. I think it's one of the best experiences and hopefully this map is good. They also say here that they're bringing in five game modes and uh, another Vortex playlist. So they're going to have Team Gun Game. Qu <laughs> Quick scope your way to victory and snipers only. So yeah, we're going to get snipers only. Horde points coming back and uh, bounty as well. And then there's going to be Jugger... Jugger mosh pit uh, that just sounds weird but basically it's like a juggernaut thing we'll get into that later we got season two of ranked play and i played a decent amount of season one but not as much as i was anticipating partially because of my newfound addiction to pal world but we'll get into some ranked play stuff later i'll talk more about it then and they're also adding another vest to the game it's going to be the ninja vest which i think they're going to cover more later so yeah here's a first look at one of the maps it's called departures now this one they're describing as medium to large size and honestly this looks pretty big like this looks like a straight up a large size map i don't know what they're on about with like medium large but we'll have to see when we go to play it i feel like this is one of those maps that's going to play out kind of slow in 6v6 maybe for like the 10v10 or 12v12 stuff it'll be a lot more action-packed but i do stylistically really like the look of this map because i'm sure you guys probably caught this as well but this is giving some serious terminal vibes maybe even some express vibes from black ops 2 a little bit so it does look like a nice map but i don't know if it's gonna play out well next up i'm sure a lot of you grinders are really gonna be looking forward to this one we have now another tiny square map this is called stash house it's almost making me think of that one modded zombies map on black ops 3 it was like the breaking bad zombies map this is quite literally shipment but just like different so we have these four outer corners and then then in the inside of the map, like the middle of the map, you can go into an interior area and fight. Oddly enough, this map makes me think of shipments, but I don't know if it's going to play out the same because like you're really going to be safe in the middle. So I feel like people will spawn in these corners and then want to flock to the inside to camp and then kill people. And if that doesn't work out, then they're just going to camp wherever they spawn because we have cover in all four corners. So, I mean, we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. It is another small size map and it's an alternative to shipments. And that already is just more interesting than some of the maps we get. And real quick, before we move on to the next map, I just want to acknowledge the fact that I have appreciate their effort to try to make new small size maps we got meat in season one which is not a bad small map but it's also like not my favorite either but i think it's also just because the atmosphere like the vibe of the map looks kind of depressing i don't know it's just kind of like a dark map it's kind of dingy looking there's fucking dead animals in the middle i mean it's not the most appealing map to look at this one could be better but next up we have another brand new map this one's called vista and no that has nothing to do with windows vista at least I hope so, because if it is, that's going to be shit. But yes, this is a brand new 6v6 medium sized map, and it actually does look like a medium sized map. And the layout is looking pretty interesting so far. Again, all of these maps seem to be a little bit more vibrant than usual, and I think they just look nice. But again, we're going to have to actually play them to see how they will actually play. But yeah, as a quick overview, we have three brand new 6v6 maps that we've never seen before that will all be here at the launch, the start of season two, unless, of course, they fuck this up. It doesn't say that they're coming later. Now, as you can see, okay, maybe this is the, the mid-season map, because they are actually remastering DOS House. It almost looks like a high-rise inspired themed version of DOS House, and look, man, a lot of people really enjoyed this map on Vanguard, and I'm gonna be honest, I, I prefer DOS House over Shipment. I did not like how Sledgehammer handled Shipment in Vanguard. I didn't like the fact that people, you know, would like 
run out of the map and sneak around different areas and stuff or camp on the second story areas, all the, the breakable cover. So for me personally, DOS House was like the best grind map and they're bringing that back into the game too, which is really cool. I was a DOS House fan and again, this looks like it's going to be a brighter, more vibrant version of the map. So to me, at least that's another big plus because I mean, that was kind of the big drawback of the original DOS house is that it was kind of dark and boring. So yeah, four maps in total for season two, and it's already looking pretty good for the multiplayer side of things. After that, we have <laughs> two map variants for multiplayer. Also, this picture just looks insane, man. You already know that they're teasing some kind of like funky looking bundle over here, but yeah, we're going to have airborne mid season. So this is like a, a really gross looking version of terminal. And honestly, this is going to be very interesting. I like all the map variants that they've been doing so far. I thought the vortex maps looked fucking insane. But yeah, aside from airborne, we also have skid grow here, which it's kind of like an overgrown like version of Skid Row. It doesn't look like it's got that much effort. I don't know. This isn't looking nearly as cool as some of the other Vortex maps we've seen. But honestly, I think it's okay because sometimes it's really hard to see enemy players on some of those variant maps. So maybe people will actually like this because it's kind of just Skid Row without that many visual changes. But moving on from that, we're also going to have the new War map. This is the one I'm probably looking forward to the most. This is Operation Tin Man. It will be here at the launch of Season 2 as long as that goes according to plan. They describe it as a large size 6v6 map, but we already know that it's going to be played out in sections. I don't think it will be like a massive war map because again, it's just 6v6, so it has to be built for 6v6. But as you can see from the overview, this looks like Overwatch from the original Modern Warfare 3. At least that's where it's going to start out. We got to actually read the description because, you know, I care about war more than most things. So it says here, the war mode receives a new large scale operation that takes place in downtown Urzikstan. Expect an airdrop as your team skydives down to the roof of a skyscraper, navigating the multi-level construction site reminiscent of Modern Warfare 3's Overwatch. There you go. One team defends and protects this structure while the other activates controls, planting explosives to clear a path downward. So this is really interesting. So it looks like at the beginning of the game, the attacking team, I think, will be infilling by parachuting. Now, I don't know if they're going to keep parachuting after that and then they just like spawn down here or something. But man, that'd be crazy if you have to parachute in every single time. Like, dude, the defending team would just be picking people off with like snipers and shit. That'd be crazy. The clips could look so cool. You just like pick off everyone one by one that's coming through the sky or like imagine hitting a triple or a quad collat as they're falling in. That would be crazy, man. OK, they actually have more info. So it says the action then descends through the skyscraper interior as the attacking team attempts to break into a secure laboratory within the structure while escorting a maw, which is modified armored Wilson. <laughs> An exploration across these sprawling facilities must occur before the Wilson can hack the data servers. The operation culminates as the attacking team exits the skyscraper into an urban park. Expect intense and ferocious combat as all hell breaks loose, with one team focusing on establishing an exfil point at a PDS, prior to an extraction helo arriving. Oh my god. Yeah, this is why I love the war experience. Like, they get to actually craft a unique experience for each map and I don't know man so far war has been my favorite part of the game and we just need more stuff like this I was really hoping for season one that we'd have two war maps by now but I guess you know we're waiting until season two and hopefully this map delivers and I hope it's actually like a good map and a fun experience but yeah next up after that we have team gun game I'm curious to read about this okay so they're describing this as basically just regular team deathmatch everyone starts with the same specific weapon and you work with your squad to uh, you know beat enemies and then progress through eight predetermined weapons so it looks like you'll cycle through eight different weapons over and over again or maybe not wait score enough points and all teammates spawn with the next weapon simultaneously with 10 team kills per gun progression and five for the final weapon okay that's interesting it says naturally you may want alternative ways to stop the rival team from scoring <laughs> which you know you can knife people or do finishing moves and you're gonna set them back first team to score 75 points wins you guys already know that i love gun game so maybe this could be a good place to get reactions and it's coming at the launch of the season so yeah i'm definitely gonna have to check that out next up we have snipers only we already know what this is i mean i fucking love sniping and quick scoping but honestly it's like weird because sometimes the snipers only modes aren't as great because you got everyone going in here trying to hit sniper clips and honestly a sniper's worst enemy when trying to go for clips is another sniper because you can get killed so quickly i think it is good to have a sniper's only playlist for them to check out and have fun with but we'll have to see how it plays out. Because honestly, sniping in Modern Warfare 3 for the base experience is already really good. And when you snipe in this game, you don't feel like you're constantly being punished versus like Modern Warfare 2 from last year. Minus the SPR and the SAB. But yeah, now we have Horde Point. We've already had stuff like this before. It's like 
hard point, but then there's zombies being thrown in. But this is a really interesting one. We have Juggermosh, which is an LTM. It will not be here at the beginning of the season, but it will be mid season, which by the way, let's see. Horde point is an, also an LTM and it will be there at launch. Okay. Just wanted to go back to that, but yeah, Juggermosh. Sledgehammer introduces a special third person perspective multiplayer mode variant called Juggermosh. So this will be in third person, not first person. Everyone will spawn in with a juggernaut playing kill confirms domination and hard point. Aside from the wand, Aside from the wanton mayhem this mode brings, okay. There are additional rules that add a tactical twist. Maneuver your hulking armor to the middle of the map and secure a powerful one-hit kill melee weapon, giving you tremendous close range power at the expense of becoming the biggest threat on the battlefield. Drop an adversary and inspect the remains. You can grab armor from the fallen and bulk yourself up so you can actually pick up armor by killing people. Also check the health bar above your enemy's heads and ensure your headshots matter as the headshot damage will be increased. So that sounds really interesting. I'm gonna read this like how I thought it was is being typed out but apart from this cranial weak spot <laughs> Your armor is impressive enough to prevent any kind of fall damage. So, oh my god, you'll actually have a ground pound. So that's kind of like when you would kick the ground in advanced warfare. So that's pretty sick. You can't die from fall damage and you can actually probably kill people by falling from a big distance. That's the word I was looking for. Anyway, only air support killstreaks are available, along with weapon reloads for your juggernaut armaments and specific perks and stronger melee damage, even without the special weapon. So that's pretty cool. This encourages a more combo-centric combat strategy where melee grenades and gun pairings are created depending on the engagement. So that's pretty cool. This sounds like a really fun LTM. I hope to God it will be available in private match. I want to try to get more open lobby stuff going on Modern Warfare 3, and a lot of this stuff has not been private match available, which has just been super disappointing. And it probably will stay that way. They're probably only going to have this in pubs which it sounds like fun but we could probably have way more fun tweaking this stuff in customs but I don't anticipate that to happen. Next up, we have another game mode called Bounty. This is going to be mid-season again. So again, not at the launch of season two. It's basically TDM, but there's an HVT. I was not a huge fan of this, so we could just move on. After that, we have Vortex Decay's Realm, which is another LTM. Sounds like it's basically going to be the Ray Gun game mode, but there's going to be more game modes to choose from, which is interesting. And it will also include the new map variants. So, I mean, the fact that it's going to take place on some other game modes could by default make it better because honestly, the free-for-all stuff, it was okay, but it got to a point where a lot of people didn't even care about the ray gun at all and they were just playing it like as a regular free-for-all on small maps which got pretty boring pretty fast next up we have season two for ranks and i mean like they're gonna have some changes coming into season two i'm pretty sure all of this stuff it's basically the same you know like we already know how the seasons work they're gonna have camos this time as rewards depending on your placement or actually no this has to do with wins so if you get a hundred wins you'll end up with like this gold like black and gold skull kind of pattern my bad that's not actually based off placement this is based off of uh, actual ranked match wins what's super disappointing about ranked play for Modern Warfare 3 and this was also a problem back with Modern Warfare 2 as well but honestly there's just too many people cheating I'm not even at a high rank and I've already run into people who end up cheating whether they're cheating the whole time or if they're toggling their cheats so they can like get a slight advantage or whatever it's bullshit. I'm so tired of people cheating and ranked. I think the reason it happened to me is because I got like that purple win streak. So we were on a hot streak and I think the game thought not that like Matt and I were cheating or anything, but since we're doing well, it's trying to find either like players or a team to match us up against that the game thinks is fair. And at that moment, it's probably thinking that we're playing it like a cheater level because we're winning so much and doing so well. So then we end up playing against actual cheaters and it's just fucked. And I'm not even a high rank. I'm still only at silver because again, I haven't been playing a lot of ranked. I haven't been playing that much Modern Warfare 3, at least compared to launch. And it's because of stuff like this. Like we want to play ranked. It could be fun, but at the same time, you know, ranked play also can get pretty stagnant because everything is super restricted. It's so limited. I think by this point in time, you might not even be able to snipe with the XRK stalker. It's just like cold Call of Duty can definitely, you know, survive and it can thrive in a competitive landscape. But at the same time, that also requires a majority of the content to just be completely locked off. Now, obviously for some things like a fucking noob tube, like the RGL 80. Yeah, of course. Don't allow that in ranked play. But the fact that they're taking out other weapon choices and variety, I, I don't know. I just, I think it's kind of goofy. And the way I see it too, is that if you want to play ranked play in, in Call of Duty, right? And you only want to use the typical meta in the game right now, which is the ACR and the Rival 9. If you want to just use that stuff 24-7, you can. Other people using stuff that's worse is not going to hurt your experience. Because facts are facts. Those are the best performing weapons, and it's the reason why the pros also use them and flock to them as well. So if you see someone else using, you know, an off-meta weapon, they're probably not going to beat you. And even if they are, it's not a guarantee that those weapons are going to consistently outperform you. It could have just been basically like an anomaly, you know? Just like a weird scenario where they happen to beat you in that situation with an off-meta gun. But I'm sure if you rematch them or played like a different map or mode, you'd probably beat them 
more consistently. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I don't have anything against ranked play in Call of Duty, and I actually do enjoy playing it, but dude, come on, we got a cheater problem. And I've actually seen a lot of people on Twitter saying that they're buying consoles to turn crossplay off to play ranked play to reduce the potential of people cheating, especially on PS5 because Sony also took a stance against Cronuses. So realistically, if you want to have the best possible chance of playing this and playing it fairly without playing against cheaters or people using scripts on PC, you have to buy a fucking PS5 and turn crossplay off, which I just find ridiculous. So in my opinion, if it's not going to get fixed and if it's going to be in a bad state, I'm just not going to play it. At least not as much as I typically would. Like I still will play it, but in fairness, we have some pretty fucking fire content coming to regular multiplayer. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe I'll play ranked. Maybe I won't. It just depends. We're speaking of which next up. We have a new perk. Ugh, it's not a perk. It's a vest. It has perks though. Oh my God. I, yeah. I'm losing my mind. I'm sorry guys. But yes, we have a ninja vest and it says that it's going to be a silent melee and throwing weapon specialist. So people who go knife only will probably have a blast with this one. It says equipment slots three. You'll get tactical lethal and field upgrade and then gear slots three. So you basically maintain your gloves, boots, gear and your tactical lethal field upgrade. So you're not really punished for using this as much as some other ones. Potentially less trade-offs, so let's see what it says. It will eliminate footstep sounds, so you won't have to run, I think, ninja. You're immune to movement reduction effects, so I'm going to assume they're talking about, like, stuns and stuff like that. So this is free ninja and free tack mask, and you still get to pick your gear slot, too. This is gonna be crazy fucking good. You also get bonus shuriken and throwing knife ammo, which... If you like to go for cross maps, this could be huge. And you're also going to resupply them every 25 seconds. And they're also saying here you can't stack coverts with the silent footstep sounds to try to make yourself even more quiet. But yeah, this actually sounds like a pretty solid vest, especially if you are someone who likes to go knife only. And even if you don't, you're given free tack mask as well as silent footstep audio. So I feel like a lot of people will actually gravitate towards this, especially if you're someone who really likes to rush around the map and use throwing knives or throwing stars. Next up, we have some stuff for zombies and we have to talk about this because dude, zombies is getting so shafted and you're going to see right here. This is it for the whole season. <laughs> There's a new dark aether story act. We have a second dark aether rift or like a, I don't know if it's dark Aether, but another rift is coming new challenges and schematics are going to be in the game as well as another warlord now i don't know if you guys can tell right off the bat this is the summary for the entire second season of zombies this is already just like pitifully small but in fairness i haven't read all of this in depth so i do want to see what they're going to say here this is the picture they use we got a ray gun we got a jug okay in season two blah 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 there's story stuff enter the second rift this is mid-season by the way so this isn't even at launch from what i could see yeah oh my god the stuff <laughs> The story is mid-season. The new rift is also mid-season. They're redacting the information, so we don't, we don't even really know what's going to be happening as well. New challenges and schematics, again, mid-season. They push back the VR-11 Wonder Weapon schematic to season two mid-season instead of season one. But there's going to be other stuff too. They call it Mags of Holding and the Blood Burner Key. I don't know what these are going to do, so I do want to read up on this. Okay, so Mags of Holding, it says, Who has time to reload? Not you if you've activated this which allows your ammunition to feed directly from your weapon's ammo stash. So basically you don't ever have to reload. So honestly, I mean, that's, that's kind of neat. Basically just unlimited ammo sort of until you run out from your reserves. Blood burner key. There's no need to scavenge for the blood burner wonder vehicle on the map if you're carrying this so you can summon that motorcycle. So that's kind of cool. I was actually really not the biggest fan of the motorcycle. I've only had it once, but I think it got like stuck or some shit. I know some people like it, but I mean, I don't know. It is something that you can get though, as well as the VR 11. This is just going to allow you to craft it before you go into a match. Honestly, nothing too crazy. The max of holding is probably the most useful, but again, I'm pretty sure this is going to be very end game stuff. So you also have to be pretty far along in zombies to be able to access this. On top of that as well, we have a new warlord. I don't think anyone really cares about these, especially because the last one from season one reloaded, the drops were just trash. You barely get anything good from it at all. And this will probably be just another repeat. Not gonna lie, for season two, the zombie shit is looking super depressing. And honestly, this is caught timing at its finest because this season, we're gonna have to go all the way back up to the, uh, the main picture and shit. But as you can see, we got Rick Grimes, dude! This is a Walking Dead season. Like, it's very zombies inspired and, like, zombies focused, but zombies itself as a mode is barely getting shit, dude. And on top of that, they're gonna have more Dune stuff coming in, like, later in the season. Oh, wow, so Rick will actually be in the Battle Pass, so you don't have to buy, like, some kind of bundle. For Michonne, that's gonna be later in the season, and you're probably gonna have to buy her bundle separately, but yeah. I don't know. Does it not sound weird that they're doing, like, a zombies kind of themed season? 
But then zombies as a mode is barely getting anything. Like, I know we kind of saw this coming, but it's just, it's a little annoying because people ended up really enjoying zombies at the beginning. But now it's really just starting to feel like an afterthought. And we could probably assume that if there is an entire season that's zombies focused and it's like very zombies themed, but then the actual zombies mode itself barely gets anything, it might only be going downhill from here. But yeah, that's pretty much it for zombies. We really blew through that fast because again, there's not much to talk about. Beyond that, we have the Warzone overview. I am just going to skip this over because again, I really don't care about Warzone. I could cover it, but man, it's just, I don't play it. So like, I don't know why you'd want to hear me talk about it, but I know for a fact that there is more stuff coming as we scroll on. I just have to get to it because there is a lot of Warzone stuff. I think we might be getting there soon. I hope. Okay, I think we might have gotten there because this is now a general overview for all three modes and they're going to be talking about the new weapons that are coming with the season, new aftermarket parts. I don't really care about the store shit and, you know, like challenges, so let's just go ahead and focus on stuff like this. Like the fact that the BP-50 assault rifle, which is, you know, the F-2000, this was in Vanguard and it's coming back into this game, so, you know, not going to be that hype. I thought the BP-50 was fun to use, but... <laughs> Just like the original F2000, it wasn't that good, but who knows? Maybe they'll make it better for this game, but I don't know. All you need to know is that this is coming back. We also have the Ram 9 SMG, so this is, it looks like a, an SMG version. Yeah, literally a 9mm version of the Ram 7, so probably also not that hype. And then after that, we have this, the SOA Subverter Battle Rifle. It's a 7.62 battle rifle, it dominates in long range, but it has low rate of fire, predictable recoil, so I feel like this could be good in like Warzone. If it does a lot of damage and it's accurate, it could be the new BR of choice for Warzone, but we'll have to wait and see. At least it's something a little bit more unique and different than the other two weapons. But yeah, let's see what else we got. Oh, okay, we have a sword. So just as a heads up, this BR is in season, so this will not be at launch and it's gonna be obtainable through a weekly challenge. The Ram 9 is gonna be in the battle pass at sector B6, and then the BP-50 is also in the battle pass B7. So maybe these two will actually be kind of easy to get right off the bat. We won't have this battle rifle initially, and the sword is also later in the season, but it says redacted, so they're not saying how you're gonna be able to get it. But I think we could assume it's probably gonna be like either a special battle pass sector or a weekly challenge. So I don't know why they need to redact this. Like there's only so many ways you can get this thing again either through a battle pass sector maybe an event but also potentially a weekly challenge wait oh this actually sounds cool so it's a one-handed sword but you can use your aim button while holding fire to put yourself into a guard stance release it for an instant slice which will just one hit kill someone I don't know if that's going to be that good, <laughs> but I do like the idea of us getting a melee weapon that isn't just like another reskin of the combat knife. It's going to be something at least somewhat more unique and different. We can only hope. Beyond that, this looks fucking crazy. We have an aftermarket part, which is an underbarrel chainsaw. Yep, I want that. That sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> we also have the Jack Backsaw, Jack Maglift, and Jack Outlaw 277 kits. I don't know what these are, but I mean, I know what a chainsaw is, so... We're gonna have to check out all of these. So for the Jack Burnout, this is for the Holger 26, and it gives the Holger a select fire mode that gives you a dramatically increased fire rate, but it can overheat and expand the barrel, which will introduce spread. So basically kind of like bloom. I am not gonna get my hopes up for that. Now that is in the battle pass, by the way. So this will be right here at launch, but a lot of these aftermarket parts have turned out to just not be that great. So while they do sound cool and interesting, they usually don't turn out to be that way. I hope that I can eat those words though and that season two will be different, but we'll have to wait and see. We have this one, the Jack Tyrant 762. It's a weekly unlock for the longbow and this one sounds interesting. Basically, it's a caliber conversion kit for the longbow and it's gonna do more damage it's gonna be subsonic. So I'm assuming since they say subsonic, you won't show up on the minimap for firing it because it's gonna be shooting the BLK ammunition. I love sniping with the longbow. I would imagine though that there's probably gonna be some kind of weird drawback that's gonna somehow make this bad. I would imagine maybe a severely reduced fire rate, but who knows? All I know is that I love sniping with the longbow. It's so fast and snappy and crisp. And I just really hope that this one's actually good and it doesn't just turn it into a pile of shit. Next up, we have the Jack Backsaw Kit. This is gonna be another weekly challenge that hopefully will work and not be broken for the Holger 556. It's a conversion kit that's gonna make it more maneuverable and yeah, it's just gonna remove the stock. That's okay. Not as exciting, but then we have the Jack Limb Ripper, another weekly challenge that I hope works. And it's an underbarrel for several weapons. They don't say what they actually are, but this is the underbarrel chainsaw and I hope it's good. This sounds fucking awesome, and I just hope that it actually is fun and viable, like, good to use. Beyond that, we have the Jack Maglift Kit, another weekly challenge that I hope isn't broken for the Haymaker. It's gonna give it an extra alarm, uh, extra alarm, <laughs> extra large drum magazine, so yeah, basically we have 
another insane fucking brecci coming that is not exciting moving on we have the jack outlaw 277 kit another weekly challenge hope it's not broken for the bass b the can <laughs> I'm sorry. The conversion kit transforms it into a lever action rifle or lever action, however the fuck you want to say it. Slower fire rate, but it's going to improve you. I can't talk. Fuck! It's going to <laughs> improve the accuracy for deadlier precision. So, the Bass B. A lot of people really like Bass B. Bass B is pretty good. Bass B. I'm clearly losing my mind reading all this. It's so much to read. God damn it. But yeah, people like the Bass B as is. I think turning it into like a lever action rifle could be kind of cool though. I just hope it's not garbage. And then lastly, another weekly unlock challenge, which will probably be the most hype, is the Jack Glassless Optic. It's going to be an optic that you can put on your guns. This is definitely what we have been dying for. I don't know if you can understand my sarcasm, but I mean, honestly though, if it is a really good sight with a good clear picture that's somehow better than like the MK3 reflector, then I think people would actually be excited for this. But if it's not, then it's just gonna get forgotten about and no one's gonna care. So that's just the reality. Moving on, we have the Black Cell, I don't care. I mean, I I could get it to skip tiers and stuff, but god damn, they made this shit so expensive. I don't care about any of these black cell variations. I mean, this looks creepy as fuck. I, I feel like they're staring at my dead body right now. There's something just very uncomfortable about this picture. Beyond that, uh, here's a look at what the black cell battle pass, or even just the battle pass itself is going to look like. We have B6 over here and then also B7 over there. So the F2000 and the SMG, you can get them in roughly 15 tokens right off the bat. Or if you buy the black cell, you know, then it's only going to be five tokens here to get the variants and then 10 tokens over here. So literally buying the black cell will cut it in half, which is obviously how they entice you to spend your money. Again, you can spend your money on this if you want. If you want to buy it, go for it. If you don't, fuck it. Who cares? I can't tell you to not buy the black cell. I can't force you to not buy it. I know that people who want it will buy it regardless. If you're happy with the state of the game and you're enjoying the game, then it makes sense to spend money on things. If you're not happy with the state of the game, then I would consider maybe not buying it. Because that is a signal to them that they're doing things right and they're going to continue doing this, which is why we've had the Black Cell ever since they first introduced it in Modern Warfare 2. It's exactly why we keep getting it every single season. Which, by the way, they have a Z next to certain things and I'm wondering what that's all about. Maybe there's some special things in here that are related to zombies. I don't know. It could be like zombie bonuses. But we have like a skin of a dog right here, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, moving on, we have some new operators coming to the game. Not going to focus on this too much, but yeah, we do have Rick from The Walking Dead. We also have Kate Laswell from the campaign coming in, which I'm sure so many people are excited to play her. <laughs> then we have John Doe. I mean, what the fuck is that? What kind of name is that for this like gold skeleton dude? I mean, honestly, that's kind of a cool looking skin. I'm not gonna lie, but that's a black cell reward. I mean, shit, dude. Even though I'm not playing as much Modern Warfare 3, that mostly has to do with the fact that Power World exists. So, I don't know. I might buy the Black Cell. We'll see. There is a part of me that wants to kind of, like, play and experience the season first, and if I'm already enjoying, like, the new war map and other things, and I see myself really playing the season a lot, then, yeah, then I might consider buying the Black Cell, but I'm not going to just instantly buy it. Beyond that, we also have some other stuff in the store. They have Michonne, which is coming later. You're, you're gonna have to buy her bundle. You can't get her in the Battle Pass. They're gonna have a Black History Month free gift, so that's kind of neat. This is actually gonna be free. Oh, my... <laughs> The Call of Duty League Let Him Cook Pack. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, not gonna lie, that's actually kind of cool. Is anyone gonna buy this? Like, look at that. This is gonna be the skin. I mean, I wonder if you're gonna be allowed to use this in ranked. That shit would be so funny. Like, this- I actually like this. This is kind of clever. One of the more clever bundles that is also not, like, overly wacky or stupid, you know what I mean? GG on that. We also have another COD Endowments pack, so, you know, this helps out the COD Endowment charity, so... That's totally fine. We have some other bundles coming later as well. Looks like we might have a, a Lunar New Year skin. That's looking kind of neat. That one looks gross. I'm- I don't know about that. This shit looks crazy. This looks like something out of Vanguard. And th this looks like something out of fucking Call of Duty Ghost Extinction. I don't know. Some interesting skins coming up, that's for sure. And for the weekly challenges, okay, so this is gonna be the final Season 2 weekly challenge camo thingy called Rotten Inferno. Now, I don't know if this is going to be animated, but honestly, that pattern is looking kind of dope. Season 2 is actually looking pretty decent so far, at least if you're someone that mostly plays multiplayer, which is me, so yippee to me. <laughs> There's going to be some different events. They're going to have Horde Hunt, which gives you four different things, Year of the Dragon, which is ten rewards, Cryptid Boot Camp, which gives you nine, and then there's going to be the Walking Dead event, which gives you ten. There's going to be some other Season 2 Reloaded events, different Prestige Challenges, so like, honestly, they're kind of still out here killing it. Wait, also they're talking about Call of Duty Warzone Mobile coming. Oh dear lord. When is that coming out? I, I know I'm pre-registered, but 
this is still not out yet. I wonder when they're going to finally drop the release date for this game. They're also saying upgrade to Modern Warfare 3. Uh, I don't need to do that. Well, that is everything. I obviously skipped the Warzone stuff because I really don't care that much. But yeah, Season 2 is honestly looking pretty beefy. This shit is looking massive. The multiplayer side of things is looking pretty solid. The only thing that doesn't feel as strong is the new weapons. I feel like I don't care as much about the new weapons that are coming into the game. But again, we have all the guns from Modern Warfare 2 and all of the weapons in Modern Warfare 3. We have plenty of weapon variety, so the fact that they focused a lot on maps, I feel like, is a pretty smart decision, as well as bringing in some interesting game modes, whether they're brand new or returning ones. Zombies is getting absolutely shafted on this season, and Warzone, I mean, just from looking at that picture, they got some stuff going on. I don't know if it's good or bad, but if there's one thing I do know, it's that I thank you guys very much for sticking through and watching all of this video, at least if you've made it this far. And I definitely want to hear from you guys. What do you think about the Season 2 roadmap for Modern Warfare 3 so far? I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think about this season, because at least in my opinion, it's looking pretty good in a lot of different areas, but then in others, it's like... Yikes. But either way, thank you guys very much for watching. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did and you're looking forward to season two for Modern Warfare 3, make sure to drop a like. I'll see you guys later.